Praise the Lord and good morning. Welcome to the Sanctuary Praise Sunday School Bible Lesson. We hope that this will be a blessing to you today as we continue to study about the armor of God and the shield of faith. Today our lesson, of course, is dealing with the shield of faith and that's what we're going to be speaking about this morning. If you have your pen and pencil, you might want to write down some scriptures that we'll be giving you in just a moment and you can follow along with us in your Bible. Uh, we're going to go back and refer to the text that we have been carrying forth every Sunday with all of our teachers and that is found in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. And this scripture, of course, is giving us the description about the armor of God. And it says, um, we're going to read some scriptures here in the chapter 6 and verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Verse 13 says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with the truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Notice that verse starts off and it says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. In looking at that particular phrase in the last verse that I read, we're talking about this shield of faith. And Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You know, faith is like the wind. It's like the air. You can't see it, but you can feel the effects of it. Each of us is given a measure of faith, so we have the resources to use this armor that God said for us to use this shield of faith, we're able to use it to protect us. 1 John 5 and 4 said, And whosoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Going back to some more scriptures that are very important that we might want to look at, is 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God in the pulling down of strongholds. 1 Timothy 6 and 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art called, and hath professed a good profession before many witnesses. 1 Timothy 2 and 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And finally, 1 Timothy 4 and 7, Paul says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. All of this regarding the scriptures that we've read is talking about a battle and about a war. We're not in a physical battle against Satan, but we're in a spiritual battle against Satan. Not only that, but as we speak, we're in a war with an invisible enemy, which is this coronavirus. And we may speak a little bit about that later. But let me say this, Paul urges us to get prepared for the battle. And that's what our teachers up to this point have been giving you very good instructions on what to put on. So today, we've got, finally, let's put on that shield of faith and let's use that to its fullest capacity. It's interesting that Satan uses many tactics to use against the church. In Revelations, he condemns us. In Timothy, he devours us. 
In 1 Peter, he puts us in prison to imprison us. In Revelations, he ensnares us. And in Timothy, also says to take advantage, he has even tried to steal the word of God away from us. Because you see, Satan is not like God. He is a created being. So he's limited to his powers. He is not all-powerful, all-knowing, or everywhere present. So he does, he does accomplish very much evil simultaneously. How does he do that? He does it through his organized kingdom of darkness. Principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. No matter how our circumstances may look on the outside, our battle is not against human beings. And I guess we can relate to that today, can we not? We are wasting our time fighting people when we ought to be fighting the devil who seeks to control the people that he may oppose the work of God. We need to look at the scripture and notice that this shield that we have is very vital for us to survive. Looking in Paul's day, it was a wrestling match. And you can recall some of the things that we've written in uh, history, in Bible history, about how that they would, the gladiators would fight in an arena for entertainment and their, their fight was for good. In Paul's day, it was a wrestling match and not mere entertainment. It was to fight to the finish with the loser having his eyes gouged out and the battle would be won by one person still remaining alive after the battle was finished. Our battle with Satan is life or death, conflict with evil consequences. But I'm here to tell you today we have some good news. We can defeat Satan if we do it God's way. We are no match for his power alone. But the Bible says he's given us power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon us. And we're to take this shield of faith and use it as our weapon of warfare. Ephesians 6 and 13, it talks about taking this, above all, taking this shield of faith that we can quench the fiery darts of the wicked. Let's look at this shield for just a moment. How do we use it? We are taught of all the other armor that we are to put on in this warfare that we're fighting. And this armor is to protect us and to keep us from being attacked by our enemy. Note that it's very important that each piece of our armor is in place. Because if it's not, guess what? That's where the devil is going to try to attack us. And so today, as we look at this shield that we're to use, I want you to look at something very important. Every spiritual battle carried out against Satan's foe must include, must include prayer. As we put on this piece of armor, the shield of faith, we cannot do this without prayer. You know, just the events that's happened in the last few days, few weeks, we see unfolding around us the urgency of prayer. And as never before, people are falling on their knees and uniting in prayer against this invisible enemy that we're facing. The devil is invisible. We can't see him. But I want to tell you something. We have a greater power that can give us the strength to fight our foe, to fight our enemy. This shield that we have is to be used to quench the fiery darts of the devil. You've probably seen in different, different pictures in the past of how that our warriors back in the day, they would put fire on the end of their arrows and they would shoot it over the walls and into the cities that they were trying to conquer. 
but they had to have a extinguisher. And today our shield is used to extinguish the fiery darts of the devil. That's the first purpose of our shield of faith. Our second purpose is this. It's used to balance us as we stand. The Bible says for us to take the shield and to stand, stand strong. It gives us stability. It gives us a foundation. It gives us balance when we stand with our armor in, in our hand against the, ar the armies of Satan that come against us. The foundation that we're to stand on is truth. And praise God, it's the apostolic doctrine that we love and cherish. Let your feet stand firm with the shield in your hand. It will balance you as you fight this warfare with Satan. Number three, it's also used as we walk. We don't just stand in one place when we're using the shield. We've got to walk. And the Bible tells us, and I just, I just excite, I get so excited when I think about how precious this is. We are not fighting this warfare alone. This battle is not ours, but it's the Lord's. We cannot see what's ahead, but we must walk by faith. That's what the scripture tells us to do. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. And that's what this shield is. It's a walk of faith. It's not only standing and holding our shield upright, defying the fiery darts, but we're to stand. Stand still and know the salvation of the Lord. And then let us take up that shield and walk and walk and hold on to that promise. We don't walk by nothing but faith. We don't walk by sight because we can't determine what's ahead of us, but our faith will keep us grounded. We cannot see what's ahead, but the shield will give us the guidance that we need to march into the unknown and to declare the victory through the promises of God. Looking at this, we have this scripture in 1 Corinthians 2 and 5, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And in 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, we walk by faith and not by sight. What I was quoting earlier, we walk by faith. Hebrews 10, 38, now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul hath no pleasure in him. As we walk by faith, notice this scripture in James 5, 15. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, he shall, they shall be forgiven him. As we look at this shield that we're holding, I want to go back to earlier times and just if I can paint a picture in your mind about the warfare before we had missiles, before we had atomic bombs, when we, before we had all of this armory that we have access to today. Back in the early days, they didn't have that, but they had other means to fight. And when I was reading just recently about Moses giving Joshua the go-ahead to cross over and to take the cities over Jordan, and when they were gearing up to get ready for battle, they made sure that they had enough armor and enough gear and enough potential to win the battle that they were about to face. But you see, these battles were fought by shield and sword, and the shield was large. It was, it was big enough to cover their face, to cover their body, to protect them as they held it up. Usually about four feet by two feet, made of wood and covered with tough leather. It protected the soldier from the burning hours. The edges of the sword 
was constructed so that a line of soldiers could interlock them and march into the enemy's forces with a solid wall. Wow, what a, what a thought that we need to look at here. These, these spears, these spears that would be thrown at them, but these shields were used and how they were made that when the army got ready to march into a city, they could interlock their shields and they could be protected as a line fighting and marching directly against the enemy. They were a wall. They were pushing together. This was like a solid wall marching toward the enemy. If your faith is weak, I want you to look at this. The shield of faith. We've got to look at this as, as far as just joining in and uniting with our brothers and our sisters. Do you remember when you were a child? We used to play games and I can remember one in particular. This game was called Red Rover. I see some of you now remembering that game. Us kids would get out in the playground and or in our yards and we would team up and we would line up together. And one side over here and one side over here and we would call out to the other one. They would say, Red Rover, Red Rover, send so-and-so over. And that person that they called by name would take off and run just as hard as they could run toward that wall or the, the, against the ones that they were running against. And they were holding hands and they were not going to let that person in. But the guy that was running looked for the weakest point. And he would run as hard as he could and he would push through and he would win and break through. And what would he do? He would take that one that he broke through and bring him back and put him on his side. And so it was time for the other side to do the same thing. Their, their aim in this game was to break through and to crush that wall that was in front of them. And you see, I want you to notice this very importantly today. We'll use this powerful tool in our armor as we link up with our brothers and our sisters. We're going to unite and we're going to stand together, one interlocking with the other. That's what prayer is doing right now. We're using our shield of faith that's undergird by prayer and we're coming together as a church. We're coming together as a group and we're fighting the warfare that Satan has got us in battle in right now. And more than ever, as we are staying at home, staying in quarantine, trying to avoid uh, groups, trying to avoid social uh, gatherings, we have got to unite together, lock arms with our brothers and our sisters, and get a hold of God as we go into marching against this enemy. We don't know how long it's going to be. We have no idea. But we know one thing. We've got God on our side. Praise God. We've got God helping us to get through this fight, to get through this battle. I just want to remind you, the battle is not ours, but it's God's. Oh, yes, it's God's breaking and pulling down these strongholds. As we fight this fight around us, as we're faced with things that we never dreamed we would be faced with. I want to encourage you this morning. I want to let you know that we are able to conquer all of these things through the blood of the Lamb because we are covered by His blood. I want you to know today and encourage you that we have a shield that we can join arms and lock these shields together as a church as a group of people, as we unite together and we fight against this warfare of Satan that we are battling right now. I don't know about you, but I feel like that God is complete control, complete control. We don't have to fear. Our pastor encouraged us on our Wednesday night service. We don't need to jump on the battle, the, the uh, bandwagon of fear. We don't need to jump on the bandwagon of fear. We need to jump on the bandwagon of united 
prayer, uniting our shields, locking arms with our brothers and our sisters, locking arms in believing God for miracles. As it's been prophesied, revival is coming. Who knows, this may be just the beginning of a great revival that we have been expecting for some time. I want to encourage you today, let you know that this is in God's hands. We don't have to worry. God will give us sweet peace because we know the battle is His. It doesn't belong to us. I'm encouraged today to know that we have something to fight with, and that is the shield of faith. My friends, God bless you with praising God and just going to keep praying for you. And you remember us in prayer. Let's don't forget to unite together in prayer with our church family. God bless you.